Hey, so what's up with Studio Ghibli? Alright, we gotta go all the way back to the 80s and introduce you to three dudes. This is Toshio Suzuki, and he was an editor at a manga magazine called Animage in Japan. After the release of the film The Castle of Cagliostro, Suzuki thought it'd be a good idea to interview with the film's director for an editorial in the magazine. The director of that film was a young man by the name of Hayao Miyazaki. You see, Miyazaki had already been working in the anime industry for some time, but he was just starting to spread his wings as a director. He was overflowing with stories to tell, and what began as an interview with a manga magazine led to Suzuki falling in love with Miyazaki's ideas. There was one idea idea, however, that was special and stood out to Suzuki. It was a story about a young girl amidst an environmental war. Miyazaki called it Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. The story moved Suzuki so much that he decided to ask his bosses at Tokumushoten if they'd allow Miyazaki to make a manga of it. They gave him the go-ahead, and in February of 1982, Animage Magazine began serialization of the Nausicaa manga. The story became popular with readers, so much so that Tokuma decided they wanted to see it animated. In 1983, a Nausicaa film went into production. Since Miyazaki was directing the film, he decided to bring on one of his homies as an executive producer. This guy's name was Isao Takahata, a guy with a similar resume to Miyazaki. Both of them started at Toei Animation in the 60s, and they had worked on a few projects together in the past. In 1984, the Nausicaa movie opened in Japanese theaters and was a critical and box office success. Now here's the important bit to Ghibli's history. After that dub that Nausicaa took in theaters, Miyazaki, Takahata, and Suzuki decided they should start teaming up to make more films together. So the three of them founded a production house exclusively for their films. Miyazaki was the one responsible for naming the studio. He chose the name Ghibli because it was a name used for a World War II plane from Italy. The Italians pronounced it Ghibli, and they gave their plane this name because it means hot desert wind in Libyan Arabic, and Miyazaki liked the idea of his studio being able to blow a new wind through the anime industry. So Ghibli it was. However, in Japanese pronunciation, Ghibli turned into Jiburi, which gives us the commonly known Ghibli pronunciation. Or you can just say it however you want, it really doesn't matter. But yes, the newly formed Ghibli would indeed blow a new wind through the industry. For the next 18 years, Miyazaki and Takahata would trade off on what we now consider to be some of the most iconic animated films films of all time. Miyazaki directed classics like My Neighbor Totoro, Kiki's Delivery Service, and Princess Mononoke. Takahata directed films like Grave of the Fireflies, Only Yesterday, and Pompoko. In 1996, a partnership began between the Walt Disney Company and Tokuma Shoten to bring Ghibli movies to North American audiences. While the Disney-Ghibli alliance was storied and riddled with a history of legal battles in and of itself, there was a shining moment that the two companies were able to share. In 2001, Hayao Miyazaki's film Spirited Away was released in Japan. Very quickly, the movie gained traction, becoming one of the most successful Japanese films ever. Pixar producer John Lasseter was tapped by then Disney CEO Michael Eisner to bring Spirited Away to the English-speaking world. Together with Miyazaki and a team of American directors, they created an English version of the film. With a new buzz outside of Japan, Spirited Away was able to rake in a worldwide box office north of $300 million, holding the record for highest earning film in Japanese history until 2020. Many cite the film as Miyazaki's magnum opus, as well as being one of the greatest animated films of all time. In 2003, it took home the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature Film because becoming the one and only hand-drawn, non-English film to ever win the award. Since Spirited Away, Miyazaki has only added three films to his collection of 11. As the legend began slowing down his directorial duties, Ghibli would begin featuring younger directors in their films. The son of Hayao named Goro Miyazaki was one of them. He would direct his father's screenplay for the film From Up on Poppy Hill in 2011, and another director by the name of Hiromasa Yonebayashi would direct the Oscar-nominated When Marnie Was There in 2015. The other legend, Isao Takahata, would take on the director mantle one final time before his passing in 2018 for the film The Tale of Princess Kaguya, a reframing of the 10th century story The Tale of the Bamboo Cutter. The third Ghibli founding member, Toshio Suzuki, still acts as a producer as well as the company's executive director. For Hayao, he retired from directing after his 2013 film The Wind Rises. However, he announced that he'd be coming out of retirement in 2016 to direct a new film entitled How Do You Live? This film currently has no release date, but Suzuki says its production is still chugging along. So where does Ghibli stand today? An iconic anime studio it is, with iconic creators behind it. Every anime fan knows that logo and those signature Hisaishi soundtracks. But Ghibli now even extends beyond the world of film. In 2020, it was confirmed that Studio Ghibli was developing a theme park that would showcase films like Whisper of the Heart, Spirited Away, Princess Mononoke, and more. While that is targeted for a fall 2022 rope drop, it's safe to say that Ghibli is now at a turning point. With How Do You Live being touted as Miyazaki's final film, the studio is in need of a new vision. Maybe not this kind. But no matter what the future holds for this famed production house, Ghibli will always be integral to the development of the anime industry and animation as a whole. But yeah, that's what's up with Studio Ghibli.